G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to be covering a very quick topic, which is a very useful one, especially if you're starting to develop add-ins or Python scripts or PyRevit tools. And that's going to show, um, we're going to show you how you can use the Revit API in order to filter out elements based on whether they're checked out by other users, which is really important because Dynamo scripts and also PyRevit tools can effectively not work if you don't have ownership of elements. Effectively, the whole transaction gets rolled back when it encounters elements it can't edit. So I'll be using Autodesk Revit 2024 and I'll be using the built-in version of Dynamo at this point in time. I'm going to be writing in Iron Python, but I believe most of what I write today should work in C Python 3 as well. But if you are using Iron Python like me, you will need the DS Iron Python 2.7 package in order to support that engine of Python. Um, so it's assumed you'll have a little bit of knowledge in Revit, Revit API to the, the basic level and some Python fundamentals, but I will explain as I go um, what each step is doing. Uh, but there's lots of uh, playlists and videos if you need to refresh yourself on any of those types of topics. Well, hopefully it's a useful topic. Um, so let's jump straight in. So I'm just going to boot up uh, Revit here and I'm also going to have on the side just Revit API docs where I can start looking up particular things. Now what we're going to need today is a special class in the API uh, called Work Sharing Utils or Work Sharing Utilities. Um, now this class is really useful for assessing the status of elements but also checking things in and out uh, when you're in a work shared environment. So in this case we can see we've got uh, a whole bunch of methods that we can apply. You can see you've got the ability to check out elements, entire work sets, create a new local file, um, but also relinquish things as well. In this case what I'm going to be focusing on is the get checkout status method of a particular element. So in this case, I'm just going to go to this method and we're just gonna boot up a work shared Revit model. In this case, every element will currently be owned by no one. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just modify a couple of these elements so now they're owned by me. Um, so you can usually check this in Revit uh, very easily. I think it's under one of these ones, this one. And you can check uh, the checkout status of elements. I can see in this case that I'll own a few of these. So you see it's created, but it's also owned by me, whereas this one should be just owned by no one because it's been checked into central. We can verify this by synchronizing. And this should, once I relinquish all, send them back. But as soon as I modify these, you can see they're now owned by me. So we're gonna be trying to find out when these elements are owned by another user instead. So what I'm gonna do is just go to manage, and we're gonna boot up Dynamo. And this workflow you can usually put inside any script where you're dealing with changing or trying to get permission to modify elements or create elements that might conflict with other ones. Um, so I'm just going to create a new script and I'm just gonna select all these walls so that we can assess their checkout status. Somewhere in there, there it is. So I'm just gonna select all these walls, but this could be any amount of elements. And we're just gonna filter these elements and find out whether they are owned by another user. Um, in this case, I'll obviously be in an environment where I technically own everything or don't own it. But in this case, I'll show you how you can still simulate this if you're in an environment with other users instead. So in this case, I'm just gonna boot up a Python script. Now this Python script is going to have my Python template, uh, my boilerplate. So if you do want a copy of my boilerplate, um, if you just head over to the Aussie BIM Guru GitHub and you just go to my uh, miscellaneous repo or repository, which should be under repo. Uh, miscellaneous and you'll find this Python template uh, that you can use uh, as well in your own workflow. So I'm just going to jump back to Dynamo and plug this in. Now for now nothing's going to happen. My default template just sends the elements right through. Now we don't need all of these things and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and zoom in which I can actually do in Revit 2024 which is great. I'm just going to delete everything all the way down to Revit services because we don't need any of these uh, Dynamo specific uh, references and I, we don't need a transaction manager because we're not engaging in any transactions. I'm just going to take out the UI references and when we're importing uh, Revit DB, I can actually be a little bit more specific here in what we need. Um, we're, going to, we're going to need two things. So we're going to need firstly the checkout status uh, and this is an enumeration which we'll talk about soon and then the work sharing utilities class. Um, I've started to become a little bit more specific with what I import. Um, it is a good practice once you get further into programming to only import what you need. Um, and in this case, this is a really simple little workflow where this is a good idea. I'm now just gonna get rid of all these UI app and UI doc references. And we're just gonna store the current document as doc. I'm gonna keep uh, this function in the middle and I'll just explain that one as well. So this function 
effectively just takes a input from Dynamo and checks if it's a list. And if it's not a list, it makes it into a list with just one object. So it forces it into an iterable object so that I can loop across it. Um, otherwise you can get errors if you try to iterate across a single object. That's all it does. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is just delete these inputs and I'm gonna say that um, elements is equal to the unwrapped list version using this function of in zero, so the first input. I'm gonna get rid of my transaction manager and we're not doing any DS types. And at the moment, uh, we're just sending through elements. So we should just get the elements straight through the Python script, nothing special there. Um, now what we're gonna do is actually try and find out which elements are checked out. So let's go back to Revit API docs and we can see that this method, which we apply to the work sharing utilities class takes two arguments. The first one is a document, which will be the current document. And the second argument will be the element ID of the element we wanna check the status of. And it's going to return a checkout status, which is what's called an enumeration, which is basically like a special class which has fixed options that it can return. So in this case, it only has three possible outcomes, owned by current user, owned by other user, and not owned. Uh, for now, let's just check uh, what the statuses of these elements are by sending them through the script and getting their checkout status. So I'm gonna go back to the get checkout, checkout status method. And from out, I'm just gonna say uh, square brackets. So we're gonna do what's called list comprehension here. And I'm going to say uh, work sharing utils dot get checkout status uh, doc and the element dot ID. I'm gonna say for E and elements. So we're effectively circumventing having to use a for loop here. It's a special syntax in Python where effectively it loops across the argument of the element for the element in elements. So I'm gonna go run. And we can see we have a couple of enumerated options here. We can see not owned and owned by current user. Um, now what we're really looking for here is actually not those two types of statuses. We're actually looking for owned by other user because we know in this case, we're not gonna be able to edit the element if someone else owns it. So what I'm gonna do here is create what I like to call a global constant. Um, I've started to use these a lot in Python. Um, so what I do is I actually declare things that I'm gonna use many times to a variable rather than asking for it many times from the Revit DB. It's slightly faster from what I understand, but it just makes the script a little bit easier to read as well. So in this case, I'm just gonna say owned by other user. So I usually make my constants all capitals. Um, and then I'll just say equals. And in this case, we're gonna ask for the checkout status dot. And in this case, we want owned by other user, which we can see here. And I can now use this global constant anywhere without having to write this out and do it multiple times within looping structures. It's a little bit more efficient. Um, so in this case, I now wanna have a function and I want this function to return whether the element is owned by another user. So I'm just gonna make a function to check if element is checked out or is editable, I should say. And I'm just gonna say def for defines, we're creating a function here. And I'm going to then say that we wanna say uh, element is editable. This is just what I'm calling my function. I usually like to use something, what is the thing, underscore, what are we doing? Um, and then I'm just gonna take in two inputs in this case. The first one is what are we looking at? The element is what we're looking at. And then we also need a document. Now what I like to do with functions that refer to the current document is I usually give them a default argument. And I usually call it my doc or my UI doc. I'm gonna say is equal to doc. So what's gonna happen here is if I don't specify the second argument, it's going to assume that I'm working on the current document. Otherwise, I have the ability to put in a different document if I want to within my broader scripts. And I find that gives my functions a little bit more flexibility if I need them to have it. As well as this, now I can uh, actually check if these elements are work shared. So in this case, I'm going to say, first of all, we're getting a checkout status as a variable. And I'm just gonna say in this case, this is work sharing utils dot, and we're gonna use the get checkout status uh, method. And in this case, it takes two arguments. First of all, my doc, which will sometimes be the main document and otherwise it will be what we specified. And then I wanna also take element dot ID because we need to get the ID of the element, not the element itself. At this point, this should actually return one of those enumerated checkout status options. So we can now check if that is equal to or not equal to the owned by other user status. So I can now say return, and we're gonna say is the checkout status 
Now we want to say in this case, is it not equal to that? Because if we know if it's not equal to that, then it should be editable. So I'm going to use the exclamation mark equals syntax to say not equal to. And now I can just use my global constant. And now it should return true if it's not equal to that. And it should return false if it is equal to that. Very easy. Um, at this point, now we just need to return uh, in a list comprehended format. I'll use list comprehension here. And I'm just going to use the element is editable function across uh, E, which is going to be inside a for statement within this list comprehension. I'm not going to specify documents. So my function's automatically going to go and collect doc, which is the current document. I'm going to say for E in elements. And we can see now, of course, these are all true. So we now know that all these elements are editable. And what I like to do after this is just intervene with a filter by Boolean mask. And now we effectively should end up with an in list, which is the editable elements, and an out list, which is those that are checked out. And you can do lots of things with the out list if you want to count them or report them to the user and say, you know, everything was changed except for these elements, because the great thing about this output is it will give you the element IDs of the elements it couldn't do anything to. You can also use, use this as a logic gate to make sure that you actually want to proceed. Maybe you stop if you can't own all the elements. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, another option is we can also just build two lists, uh, a list of elements we can edit and a list of elements that we can't. So I might quickly just modify the script to show you how that works. So I'll put this, uh, this off to the side and let's just copy this Python script. And now my goal instead is to send out two lists, uh, one with editable elements and one with non-editable elements. So I'm going to go edit. And we can use almost the same code, but instead I'm just going to build uh, two lists. Uh, so I'm going to say check elements, and I'm going to say uh, editable and non-editable are equal to two lists. I'll just zoom in a little bit. And we're just going to iterate across um, all of our elements and just yield them into the list, depending on whether they're ed editable or not. So I'm going to say for e in elements, and we're going to say if, and again, we're going to use the element is editable function. So now we know if it, this is true, then we're going to want to append the element to the editable list. So we're going to say editable append e, otherwise else we know it's non-editable. And now instead we can just take these two outputs and send them through instead. And now we should see we'll have two lists. And usually when you come out of a Python node in Dynamo, of course, it all comes out as one list. So we can just say uh, editable in a code block equals to uh, out zero, so the first object. And then we can say non-editable equals to out one. And this lets us deal with these outputs as two specific lists. So this would also work really well. Um, it circumvents the need for a Boolean mask. Um, and it also means you just proceed on with the two lists as you want. Um, so hopefully this has been a, a useful technique. I use it in pretty much every single PyRevit tool that I build um, using a custom library and class to run this process. Um, and it helps me just make sure that my tools can run uh, as well as possible across as many elements as possible as well. Um, so hopefully it helps you also in that scenario. So you can find this script and all my other stuff over on my GitHub. Um, and you can, you can find a lot of other things from different platforms there as well. Um, and I hope you found this a useful video. If you found it helpful, feel free to like, follow, subscribe, and share it with other people. And of course, if you have video requests, feel free to leave them in the comments as well. Um, I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos in future. Thanks. Take care. Bye.